Our next speaker, Dennis Ginnivan, follows the same lifestyle, and if I'm honest, he's quite an extraordinary human. Not on, only has he been a Churchill Fellow, of which his subsequent report on farm debt mediation led to the introduction of mandatory farm debt mediation schemes in New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland and South Australia, but is also encouraging citizens to engage in our democracy through his community group Voices with Indy. Dennis is combining his love of social change with his hometown, whereby he's currently the co-chair of Totable Renewable Yuck and Dander a voluntary community group which aims to, which is the goal of achieving 100% net renewable energy by 2022. It is amazing to welcome such a lively, passionate and proactive person as Dennis, so please make him welcome. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I feel very privileged and honoured to have the chance to represent Tata Renewable Yakadanda here today and I'm going to tell you quite a bit about it, the, the detail behind it all. Um, and I just wanted to pay tribute to the organisers. Uh, it's just so good to uh, see such endeavour and energy and commitment to making something happen. I, I have a little business called Events That Matter and I was just talking to Ilo about, you know, some events do matter and some events don't matter. But this one definitely matters. It's so important. It feels like it's a generational responsibility for these sort of events to happen. And we, we I don't mean just a handover responsibility to another generation, but to work with generations and set the language for how that can best happen. And I should say, in the projects that I've been involved with, um, that generational collaboration is so important and so defining. Um, we need each other. To get things done. I remember in some of the political campaigns and other activities we've been involved with through Voices for Indi, um, there's some things I can't do, and general, my, people of my generation just, it's not their area, and vice versa. We know lots of things that we can impart, or people that, you know, contacts and resources. So that collaboration is something I'd really like to emphasise up front. <coughs> so, um, my presentation is about a small rural community and its renewable energy journey. Totally Renewable Yakandanda, TRI, was formed in 2014 with the lofty goal, lofty aspirational goal, for the town to be effectively off the grid, not actually, but effectively in terms of gross power generation relative to gross power usage by 2022. And uh, when I first heard this, I should say, the people who were putting this out there were people in their early to mid twenties, and they were bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and had this idea, this fantastic idea. And I remember thinking, "Oh, I hope you don't get burnt by your enthusiastic, idealistic uh, energy. I hope you don't get disappointed by what might happen." And I didn't, I, I didn't say that, but I could just feel, just didn't want to see see good energy go go somewhere uh, unproductively. But I now believe it's going to happen. And so I should say, since that time, people, there's a number of people from more of my age have been able to work alongside the core people who have actually led this project. And they are the people in their 20s and early 30s. Um, and I think that if they, were, if they were here, they'd be equally um, inspired, I think, by what's going on. So very briefly, a little bit of background about Yakandana. I get the feeling that quite a few people here actually know what it means. It's not an animal, a vegetable, or a mineral, it's actually a town. Yeah, yeah. And um, in northeast Victoria. Um, it's in a beautiful place, hilly hill country, and forest, agricultural, cleared land, a population of around 1,500 people in a 10k radius. Um, and it's sort of in the foothills of the, the Great Australian Alps. Uh, we've had the gold thing, and early development of money associated with the town. Um, and there's been a sort of quite a bit of adaptation as agriculture has changed around it. And as, as the Albury Wodonga became a, um, a growth centre in, under, under the, the um, Gough Whitlam's uh, era, which is way back, um, it became like a satellite commuter town and it was for, because of its physical beauty um, for people to decide it's a nice place to live. So in a way, there's a few, uh, uh, in, in addition to telling you what we've done at, at Taylor Renewable Yakinanda, some of these elements or aspects around what's happened there helped to define, I think, why it happened or how it happened. So we had a whole lot of new, new um, uh, 
tree, you know, tree changes or people coming in with different sets of skills and sets of set, sense of possibility about what could happen. Um, and you know, through, say, over the last 20 years, there's been some really good projects. And I know Canberra has a, a, a small folk festival, but we have a really big one at Yakin Dan. It's been yeah. down there, uh, 21 years now. And I think it's one of those cultural things that the town could get to fully get behind and sort of set up a common identity uh, through that. Um, another, another defining thing has, has been uh, about 12 years ago, the, the fuel station in the fuel station in Yakandanda had to shut down. It was no longer a viable thing. And um, the community actually issued shares. We've got a business idea going. And uh, the community bought, uh, and, and bought into the establishment of a, a community-owned uh, fuel outlet. So, which is now community-owned, profits have come back into the town um, and get distributed uh, within the town. So it's, it's kind of like a, that's another defining thing a bit of, in terms of a town's identity that against all odds, you could actually set up a fuel station that wasn't owned by someone in West Texas or you know, someone that sort of had a distant relationship. And, and secondly, the, uh, well, another aspect I just wanted to quickly uh, mention is the political context for um, the fertile seat of Indi, um, which is um, where we live, where I'm from. Um, so Indi is uh, up until, well, since Federation had been held by uh, the Conservative Party, uh, like as a rural conservative sort of a, a part of the spectrum. But in 2013, um, this group called Voices for Indi actually um, decided we need to sort of find a way to engage people, find a way to uh, encourage them to participate in the, uh, as citizens, um, publicly in, um, as, a, as a, a voter, and find a way to get interested in the process of politics intersecting with representation and thus government. Anyway, what happened? One thing led to another, and um, uh, an independent got in in 2013, the federal seat of Indi, and subsequently in 2016, she, she got in with a, an increased majority. And the only reason I'm mentioning that it's not a like partisan political point I'm making. It's more that the context of uh, groups like um, Total Renewable Yak, and I wouldn't say it's a straight line, but there's a relationship between community endeavour and um, leadership encouragement. So I, I don't know exactly how to quantify it, but you can't help but um, see it when it's happening. Um, when Total Renewable Yak uh, started in 2014, there was a climate of possibility uh, and then a culture of, well, if you want something done, you get out there and do it. Um, and as time went on, we were getting a lot more um, uh, encouragement from our federal representative. And I should say, I'll talk about it more in detail, but um, in addition to Total Renewable Yak and Dander being able to achieve its um, program, which I'll talk about, um, the federal members now encouraging the whole idea of a uh, total renewable Indi, which is like a region of about a third of the, a quarter of the state, um, like an electorate actually adopting a common sense of philosophy and possibility about renewable energy. It's not to say that we don't want, we just still need security of um, current uh, power and availability, but to explore as much as we can the options to minimise that dependence. <coughs> So there's the town, um, that's the main street, that is the block of the Yak and Dander. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful little place, I'm, I'm sure that if you've been there, I know you'd like to come back. 2014, as I mentioned, that's when the group got started. There was a lot of um, enthusiasm for it, we had no idea where it was all going to go, and there's some of the people who, um, who uh, got behind it, and I should say there was a culture of if, if uh, anyone can do have a crack at some of these things, given our own history and our own sense of confidence, then uh, Yak and Dander can. So, oh, I'll go back one. So through through this, the time that we've been running, we've done all sorts of things, and that's just, just a, a, a photo of an evening where that guy at the far end in the shores, his name's Soren. He's from Denmark and he lives on an island um, uh, just off Copenhagen. Uh, there's about, I think there's about 5,000 residents on the island. And they've been exporting wind-generated power since 2009. Like it's actually, the community as a whole owns that power generation capability. 
So they're, they're exporting their power into, um, into the grid and elsewhere. So it's like a, in addition to agriculture or fishing or whatever, whatever other industry there is, that's what they're doing. So they're, they're, that's just a typical, you know, like an information night with a guest speaker, which is pretty casual. Um, but that's the sort of feel that Yanga Dander will, 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 will create to welcome people to the town and to get discussion going. That, that, that's the um, Yakandanda Hospital Health, Health Service, um, and <laughs> it, it, it got into uh, solar power, so solar uh, panels um, about four years ago with, with the support of Total Renewable Yak, and uh, they, they've, they've halved their power bills since doing that, and that's without battery. And I think I'll just stop. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, that's just one more um, iconic sort of picture, but the, the local um, water authority has um, Northeast Water has decided to uh, run their water treatment facility at Yakandanda um, with solar only. And so it's one of the first in Australia to do that. It's actually quite a, uh, a novel idea. We still haven't quite got there, but that's their goal, is to make it uh, independent of um, grid-based power. Yeah, so I just want to, at this, at this point, before I go back to talk about some of the, the projects that Total Renewable YAC has done, this brochure here, um, which is called Towards the Total Renewable Indi, um, I've got copies of this out on a, you might have seen a cultish looking orange, um, yellow yak out on the table out there in the second level. Well, that's me, and uh, that's, that's, that's our iconic sort of um, mascot, so to speak. But um, on that, if we've got um, brochures like this and also brochures about the Yakandanda mini grid um, uh, projects that are happening. So this is actually presented, uh, was produced by Cathy McGowan, the, her office put this together to actually try and capture the possibilities of a region-wide uh, renewable energy strategy as I mentioned earlier. So, um, I, I just want to keep, given the point of what I feel is the most important part of this um, festival, this Durham Festival, is, is this idea of co connecting with the energy um, cap interest and enthusiasm of younger people. So I just want to, um, when I'm speaking, like, I'm mindful of everything I've mentioned here, as that's been being done in collaboration, and I just want to encourage people to think about um, if, the, if this is a burning issue or something you want to get involved in, to feel strong and feel, f find a way to be part of it and, and work, with, um, work collaboratively with other people. So when I first started, I was just a guy who had a, was getting big power bills and um, not knowing what to do. And, and at the time, Total Renewable at Yak had an, an evening uh, called Bill Busters, um, which was like, bring your power bill in and we'll have a bit of a chat about um, uh, what's going on with your bill and what are the opportunities here to actually make it. it, it, it and that wasn't necessarily involving re renewable energy at that stage. It was actually, how can we make your house more um, energy efficient? Um, so that was one thing they did in the early days, and I, um, and I did was pretty impressed by the fact this was happening because I wasn't being gamed by any power company. I didn't feel like I was getting taken for a ride. I trusted and knew the people who were involved, and I should say the renewable energy uh, journey in Yak has been based on a relational um, transaction rather than some kind of a advertising transaction. So if you know people, if you trust them, you like them, you know they're going to be around. You know you've got they've got your back. It's, it's an easier way to get convinced by you know, embarking on a strategy than getting a brochure in the post box and uh, someone giving you a hard spin somewhere. So we've been really conscious of that in, in our work with communities too. <coughs> um, there was pledges and on on the Facebook page, all sorts of people who would just go on a Facebook and say, "I have a picture of themselves holding, I pledge to be, um, you know, I, uh, commit myself to renewable." It sounds a bit common, doesn't it? A little bit coldish, but the uh, pledging to actually get involved in the journey and to actually be public about that and show them, see that other people could see their friends or people they knew were also getting involved in it. Um, Total Renewable Yak set up uh, in the early days a perpetual energy fund, and, and that was actually we had money to uh, we got a, we got funding from a philanthropy body to then distribute and support different organisations. Um, adopt a, a renewable energy strategy, and that included the, the hospital, like the photo I showed earlier. 
Um, we did lots of fundraisers and community awareness events, and one of the ones that I got involved in organising, we invited John Hewson and Shane Howard. So John Hewson is the former leader of the Liberal Party, um, and Shane Howard, I'm sure many people would know, but he's a bit of an iconic music legend in Australia, and he was involved in a band called Goanna, he was the, he was the one who sang the, um, the song uh, Solid Rock. Uh, so you might be familiar, but when we got them, we, we invited them to a fundraiser in the evening. So we, we believe we needed to put a bit of an emphasis both on uh, what it is, the facts of the matter, and how you felt about the facts of the matter. So the facts of the matter, John Houston was talking about the investment opportunities, the strategic future for renewable energy, and, and, and to sort of give a credible argument that would be acceptable to people who would otherwise be hard to convince or, you know, be, be, be um, cautious, wary. So here's John, he's talking about, well, you can make a quid out of this stuff. He actually was put, turning it around to not just an environmental strategy, which obviously is so important, but in terms of convincing people that otherwise not, may not be, there's actually, way back then, four years ago, he was saying oh, there's a, an economic advantage directly. And Shane actually not only uh, he entertained us on the night, but he actually wrote a song about Total Renewable Yakandanda, and um, I think it may, it may be played later, but it, it's actually quite an aspirational, inspirational song about uh, having, a, having a crack at things and embarking on a journey. So we wanted, we wanted to find the nexus between the head and the heart in, in, in working on this, top, on this topic. How do you feel about your kids, your grandkids, how's the future of humanity going to work out? What can we do to act positively and pragmatically engage with this now? Um, and then along the way, one of the biggest, big partnerships we formed was with a group called Ausnet, the um, Poles and Wires company that exists in about 50% of Victoria, the eastern half of Victoria. And they um, helped us with a strategy to develop what I call a, uh, the Yakandanda Mini Grid. So Yakandanda Mini Grid is, as you can see on that photo there, there's brochures of the, uh, um, like this on the table too. Um, there's about 14 houses in this little picture here, each which, each which have um, solar panels on them. So at the moment, if you're generating power in an individual house, whatever you don't use goes into the, off into the grid. But under this system, there's a monitoring system um, and, a, and all those houses are connected together. So if house A is generating power through the solar panels, uh, rather than any excess or all excess going into the grid, it goes on to house B. And if house B doesn't need it, it goes off to house C. So there's, there's an interconnectivity, and each of them have a monitoring system that can show how much power each house has um, generated and, and how much each house has used. So individuals can see their own usage and production, but then collectively, um, an entity above all that can see what's going on in a community. And this is really a demonstration project. We worked through our third mini grid project in, in Yakandanda, um, and they, uh, um, Mondo Power is the name of that um, authority, um, Osnet Services and Mondo Power is the renewable energy arm of it. But they are seeing all sorts of opportunities to take this to a much bigger scale <coughs> than what we've got now. So, um, the monitoring unit is called a, an UBI, which is ubiquitous, it's short for ubiquitous. It's sort of everywhere, and um, it'll be their model of, of making this uh, renewable energy um, sharing more scalable. How are we going for time? About 10 minutes? No? A couple of minutes short, thanks very much. I'm really conscious of lots to say in a short time, but I also encourage you to check out our website. We've got a lot of the, a lot of the information about what we're up to is in that in that website. Um, we've also uh, just going back to there's been now two solar bulk buy strategies. So people people have been offered a better deal on purchasing the solar panels through uh, collaborating into one one price for a larger number of um, participants. And the last one we had was 140 households went into it. And this, the, the second one's going out soon. And we've also got a hot water solar, solar hot water service bulk buy happening right now too. So was, I think I, I'm just conscious of winding up, but the, the main thing is to say is it's, it's a community collaboration. Most of this whole thing has been done voluntarily because people believe in it and feel it's important. 
um, and it's led to other projects that may, uh, where people may get employed. We sort of see this is what can happen and lead to more employment in this field locally. As I said before, the profits from projects like uh, this will end up back in, um, in our own community. There's one big project I will mention that's sort of current now, and that is developing a, um, a community energy, energy retailer. So at the moment, you all would get power bills from an AGL or Energy Australia or whatever it is. Um, and that they are a company away from our, from typically away from the region, or for us, for us it is. It actually um, we don't really have any connect with them. So we are working on developing a community energy retailer, which will be local, and the profits out of which would be, we stay um, stay local too. So yeah, I think I better finish up. I'm really conscious. I've got lots of other things that uh, I could say. In more detail, I'm happy to stick around. You'll find me near the, uh, you know, the weird, the weird cult figure up there on the, on the second level. Happy to talk further about all this. Um, I wanted to once again thank you so much for listening to me, and um, I hope you have a good time here. Yeah, I certainly am. Thank you.